guys, Phoenix Spring Tarot here. So, we know who this is about, don't we? Marilyn Manson. Okay, so this was a special request, and when I got it, I thought, oh yeah, okay, okay. And the thing is, growing up, I was a Marilyn Manson fan, so this was right up my street, so thank you for the suggestion. However, let's see what these cards reveal about this situation. So for those of you who don't know Marilyn Manson, there have been charges that have been brought to him, as you can see from the thumbnail, by Evan Rachel Wood and a number of other women, and the charges are quite disturbing. So as you guys could see, that was... The charges are quite disturbing. They're obscene, really. Hence the reason why me playing that Marilyn Manson track and doing the thumbnail that I did. So I did a pre-shuffle and the initial cards to come through, interestingly enough, was the Judgment card, as you can see there, and the Death card. It's interesting, if you look at my TI and Tiny reading, they got very similar cards right off the bat and um, in their reading as well. Death card is as if the way things or our perception of someone has just come to an end. And with the judgment card coming through, it's just something that has been a long time coming. Something that's been overdue coming up. Interestingly enough, you guys saw me shuffle. This child card came up for Marilyn, interestingly enough. Adjudication, this is going to go to court. He is going to be, chances are it's going to go to court. He is going to be charged. Also, I'm being told a word with this adjudication card. There has been a cover-up when it comes to Marilyn Manson, believe it or not, in the past regarding something legal. There was a cover-up. So the reason why I'm doing this, I'm doing these readings in a slightly different way. I did this initially just to see what initial energies we pick up with regards to him are. This change is going to be important. Okay, so there is something with regards to his childhood that has come through. So in this reading, we'll be looking at Marilyn Manson's childhood. We'll be looking at when this goes to court, what is going to come out for him. And we've seen this card called change. And what does that change mean, particularly when it comes to him? All right, so, and thoughts. I have a feeling when I'm looking at this thoughts card, he tends to get, Marilyn Manson has a habit of getting really, having obsessive, compulsive thoughts and thinking, especially when it comes to women. And I'm being told not all women, certain women. So we'll be looking at that in this reading. Okay. So I'll leave these cards to one side because this is the main themes we're going to be touching on in this reading. His childhood, his obsessive compulsive disorder, which is what that thoughts represent, what that change card means, and the fact that this is going to go legal. Okay. So let's look at what the general energies are around Marilyn Manson. Okay, gosh. We have the temperance card with the nine of hazards. Nine of hazards is the nine of it's a coins, yeah, it's the nine of coins. We also have, it's interesting, this deck is not reversed, but we have the king of coins reverse, and we have the ten of swords as well. Ooh, okay. Let me put these to one side to make some room. We'll come back to these. Let me just put them there. I'm interested in this king of coins reverse and the Ten of Swords. What this says to me is intimidation. There's been a lot of intimidation. Look at this guy looking at this ax. There's been intimidation to the point where with the King of uh, um, Hazards, 
it talks to me about someone because when you th look think of a king of um, pentacles this is someone who is about security abundance this is a provider of that people who pay attention to detail however what we have is someone with this king of coins and this is marilyn's energy by the way because he is capricorn capricorn is coins so he his energy has come through right off the bat and it's come through reverse so this represents in terms of current energy someone who's just lost control basically they've just lost control they usually pay very close attention to detail etc but they've either lost control is what i'm being told or they have abused their authority. And the reason why I say abuse authority is because we have the Ten of Swords that also came through here. And this Ten of Swords is about, Ten of Swords represents endings, but it talks about ending people in a way where you intimidate them, in a way where you mentally intimidate them, where you try to hold them back from opportunities, um, the Ten of Swords talks about backstabbing someone. So it's someone using their authority to intimidate someone, to hold them back, to backstab them. In the traditional Rider Waite, I'll show you what the Ten of Swords looks like. It's, um, yeah, there, there we go. That's what the traditional Rider Waite Ten of Swords looks like. Like you've really put the nail in someone. And that's what... I'm saying that he has a penchant for doing this. Like, it's not the first time that he's done it. And the thing is with him is that with the temperance card, believe this or not, he comes across as being really leveled, really even keeled. That's how he comes across. And he has, and I'm being told he needs to do that or come across that way. And he's like, it, I'm being told in terms of business and in terms of career, that's what he's like. He's actually, I'm being told, very intelligent with this temperance card. Very intelligent. And when you have temperance card like this, emotionally intelligent as well. And for someone, and, the, and I'm being told that being emotionally intelligent, and this is his energy, has really served him well with the nine of coins because it means that people have impressions about him but when they go in to do business with him they're actually surprised by how intelligent he is and being told the word gentil believe it or not and he's able to very smartly paint a picture in terms of those one-to-one -one interactions with him which is why he's been able to last so long he paints a good picture of him, someone being very intelligent, being very emotionally grounded. That's the way he comes across. All right. So. And people view it as, have viewed him as a while as, oh, it's just a public persona. Oh, it's just something he does. It's just something he does to shock people. Uh, you know, that's how it's come across in the past. This is Evan Rachel Wood's energy. We have the Queen of Hazards, the Queen of Coin. She's Virgo, so she is Pentacles energy. So she's come through upright and she's come through next to him as well. Ah, okay. So we have the Eight of Coins, the Eight of Hazards that's come through. This, do you see, look very closely at this card. Do you see those um, two squares on someone's forehead? That talks about mental control and manipulation. And this comes over the Ten of Swords. So that shows it's someone who, so what she's saying, guys, is unfortunately true. And that uh, with this Ten of Swords energy and the Eight of Coins, he has tried, in terms of from her mental standpoint, to gaslight her, intimidate her. This is someone with their head in a jar who suffers from depression, who suffers from that effects of someone's narcissism. It really weighs them down. It keeps them in a box. It prevents them from really revealing their true potential and again I'm being so she may come across as a woman who wears the fur coat and everything else but she's being chained it's like 
she is being chained and ch her chains and something is keeping her down is chaining her down but as you can see we can see she's chained but we can't see the source of the chain but her card has come right under Marilyn's Manson's card and his card is reversed and notice the two cards though he is chained up I'll show this up right so you guys can see he's chained up and she's chained as well. They're chained to each other. Both of them are chained to each other. So there is a link. There is a bond between them. And there, and the effects of him have kept her chained. She's done really well for herself, as you can see by the fur coat. But there is something dazed bet behind her eyes. And you can see her head is in a jar. He's really mentally done a number on her so when she says that she is speaking truth and what i'm being told is that in terms of me laying out the cards notice we have the 16 card here thoughts when this card comes up it shows someone having obsessive thoughts on someone else and this is what i said before and we notice we have the female. So we have either both of them having obsessive thoughts towards each other or it's having obsessive thoughts in a way that keeps them chained to each other. That keeps a spiritual cord between them. Both of them sort of feed off each other in a spiritually energetic way that's quite toxic is what I'm picking up here. Okay. Let's see what else is coming through. Oh my God, this card, these cards are coming out upside down, guys. And my deck is not upside down. Because usually I believe in reading cards upright, but however they come out, they come out. So we have, oh, we have two here. Okay. So for her, he came across, he's come from, from her perspective, Dayton, Marilyn, he's come across as a Knight of Cups. So someone who is really charming, someone who is really charismatic. And remember, that's what we said at the beginning with the temperance card. He comes across as very emotionally intelligent, very even keeled, right? So that's what attracted her to him. He he has a, he's very intelligent is what I'm being told. I have to research this and let me know in the comments down below. But is he Mensa sort of intelligent? It's coming through that he is very, very intelligent. However, with this King of Cups energy, it's someone who... How do you use your intelligence? Because we have the yeah, because we have the strength card and we have the knight of cups. But notice there's a bullet in the brain with the strength card. So how do you use your intelligence? Do you use your intelligence in order to make someone do what I mean is that of course you'll use your intelligence for personal gain and to get ahead in life and that sort of thing. Yes, of course. But you could also use your intelligence in a way that's not right, in a way that puts other people down in a negative way is what's coming through with this. So someone very intelligent, very charismatic, you know, they're like a wave, a tidal wave that comes over you. Uh, but the strength card, that's his, that's his thing. He looks to hook people in and get into people's brains, you know, with that um, strength card coming through. What also comes through that strength card with Evan Rachel Wood is that she's a very strong character herself as well. I'm being told that she's also quite daring. And so when someone comes through who appears to be one thing and they're not, that's intoxicating for her as well. But I'm being told that she's no shrinking violet. That I'm just being told the phrase that way, no shrinking violet. These two cards have come upside down. We have the eight of wands and we have the ten of coins have come upside down. Okay, so what's this about? So the both of these coins, there is something that's going to come out against Evan Rachel Wood that's not going to be flattering is what I'm picking up with this. The reason why I say that, because eight of wands represents communication of, of finding out something. 
finding out some news, some correspondence, either something's going to go through the news, she receives an email or something. But there is something about her that's um, the Eight of Wands, but it's upside down. So it's either the news that's coming out is going to be delayed with regards to her or the news is not going to be flattering. It's not going to work for her best interest at all. And the reason why I'm saying that is because it's coming under the Nine of um coins there is some and it's reversed there's something that's going to come out that's going to like potentially affect her money with evan rachel woods in this situation because there is something with complicity between them it's like they feed off each other's energy in a way i'm not saying that what marilyn has been accused of doing because with the ten of swords we could see that he has that potential and capacity to be very narcissistic to be abusive and to take advantage of their authority that's what the ten of swords show but there is something coming through here with when it comes to being i'm sorry to say when it comes to ah uh, i'm not gonna say it i'm not gonna say it some things are better left unsaid but we have the ten of um coins here which has come through as reverse. Ten of coins talks about your public persona, your public appeal and your money. So there is some news that's going to come out that's going to affect her money. And her not only affect her money, but affect her image of her. And there is something I'm being told about complicity. People are going to wonder how complicit she was in this relationship with him. Sorry, because... I, I, and. Again, I'm just reading the cards. I'm not injecting my personal opinion in this. I am just reading the cards. So please don't come for me. This is what the cards are saying. Okay. Let's see what else we can see between their relationship. I want to go into what the relationship between them is actually like. So we've looked in terms of Evan Rachel Wood and Marilyn Manson in terms of the outcome of the relationship and the current situation. I want to know what the relation oh god what the relationship is like. We have the King of Cups. I just someone just okay. So this King of Cups this and this relationship wasn't and we have the seven of cups here. Okay. Oh hang on guys, let me just get one more card to confirm what I'm seeing here. And then okay. I just need one more. I know what I'm saying here. I just need one more. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let me tell you guys what I'm seeing here. I want to know what the question was. What was this relationship like? Okay, so we have the King of Cups. There is this king of cups so cups energy represents someone again there is this emotional intelligence there's kindness there's balance that's what cups represents and that's what the king of cups represents if you have a partner who is a king of cups oh my gosh they're emotionally intelligent they make you feel comfortable they make you feel heard they make you feel listened to however when notice that it just seems like you're just seeing someone's eyes and there's a lot going on beneath the surface, right? And this is what was happening in their relationship. People would see things top level, but top level was just 10% of the persona they were seeing. There was a lot going on, this going down beneath the surface. There was a lot that was buried. There was a lot that was going on. And with this skeleton hair, this is telling me that a lot of it wasn't good. And we have the piranhas here picking at the relationship. So this tells me there was a lot that was subdued, a lot that was kept from the public, a lot. When I say kept from the public, I mean a lot that was happening behind closed doors. And I'm not just talking about a public persona, but I'm also talking about people around them at the time may not have seen a lot of what was going on. Now, another card that came through next to the King of Cups was the Seven of Cups. So this Seven of Cups, and notice that we have all these thoughts going around someone's head and their eyes are rolled back in their heads. So this talks about mental confusion, mental confusion, being clouded mentally. It talks about, from an emotional perspective, being obsessed, but being obsessed in a really toxic way right so one person being obsessed with the other in a very very toxic way 
this relationship is really toxic. The energy that I'm picking up from watching all of this being submerged. It's like it's a lot that was happening behind the scenes that people in their inner circle were not aware of or didn't see. But it was very toxic. And the Seven of Cups confirms that. It, it's to the point where we could send someone crazy. Because look at all the thoughts that are spinning around her head and her eyes are rolled up in her head. It's that sort of thing that could potentially send someone crazy. We have the Four of Swords here. So this represents being in something, but not really quite being in it. So when you look at this card, this is a soldier who is lying down, but in his dreams, he's constantly talk, thinking, still thinking about the war and still thinking about what he went through. So you know when soldiers go through this mental thing, it's like soldiers go through, you know, when they've come back from war, they're not all mentally there. This is like, so for Evan Rachel Wood at the end of it, it's someone who, so Four of Swords represents something, you know, people stepping away from each other or something that's sort of stepping out of a situation. So this is saying to me that they're still linked in a way, but you step out of the situation and like your brain is still going back to the trauma of that past. Do you guys see that? It's like she's, Okay, guys, I'm so sorry. This show is about still being in love with someone. I'm not thinking that this pertains to now, but in the past when they separated, there is something, I think with Evan Rachel Wood, she's going through a lot of, okay, let me find the words to explain this. Under the surface, what she went through a lot of, it's, it's like Stockholm Syndrome. That's the best way I can find to say it is Stockholm Syndrome, where you are connected and you're in love with your abuser. And the reason why I put it that way is because you have someone lying down, holding, um, whether this is a cannon or an ammunition, so holding the thing that's causing you danger, and you're just kind of reliving that. It's a term that you call for it. I'm so sorry, guys. The term has just left my head. But it's when soldiers come back from war and they live through or they have flashbacks as to what happened to them in war. That's what she has gone through in terms of this relationship. And I'm being told that she went through it for years. So after they ended for about a, quite a few years after, this is what she went through. The justice card. Note we got the justice card here. And we also got adjudication here so we have two legal cards that are on the board and this is telling me that this is going to go to court this was meant to go to court and go to legal proceedings before is what i'm saying this was meant to go to court before for some reason it didn't because i'm getting two court cards on the board here it's as if marilyn for his way of operating he's had brushings before However, specifically to Evan's, Evan Rachel Wood's case, there was some legal situation that happened much earlier on after this relationship. There is some legal situation that happened, but it didn't go through. And the reason why I say that it didn't go through is because this justice card is next to the nine which means nine is almost getting somewhere, but it doesn't quite make it. The justice card is also next to the eight of wands reverse, which is news that, or things that are meant to happen, news that's meant to come, but there's like a delay to it, right? So she did try to press some legal charge against them before, and it did not come through. I'm wondering whether that was because I'm not sure whether she was in the mental place to see it through or not. I'm not sure, but she did try. So there are two things. She tried to bring a legal case against him. It didn't work. However, she is going to try this again. She's going to try it again. However, having said that, this is really complicated because remember I said very early on, there is some news that's going to come out about her that's not going to be good. It's not going to work in her favor at all. So this case is not as clean cut as you would think it is. 
Okay, so what came out in the initial shuffle was Marilyn Manson's, um, what it was like for him growing up. So I want to have, I, I mean, well, when I want to say what it's like for him growing up. Child came through. So what that's saying is that I'd like to do a shuffle of him and his childhood. So let's do that. What was it like for a little Marilyn Manson growing up? What was his childhood like? And could his childhood shed any light on why he is the way he is now? Let's see what his childhood... I don't know why childhood came through, but we'll take what the spirit guides have given us. We have this Knight of Cups again, guys. Remember, we got this Knight of Cups with Evan Rachel Wood. We have it again. To represent that so this cups energy is cancer scorpio pisces energy it could either represent someone who was around them in their circle or represent him like representing someone who introduced marilyn and rachel but i don't think it is i think this is marilyn's energy ten of swords again that's the thing there is this habit with him where he has that There is an energy about him as emotionally intelligent and as emotionally in touch with himself that he is because he's there's a lot of water energy coming through with him. And when I look at um, Marilyn's energy, I think he is Leo. He is um, fire and earth energy. There's no water next to him. But he has a lot of deep-seated emotional issues. Look, Notice all the emotion written all over his body and he's sitting in Stonehenge. And those deep-seated issues manifests in... He does a lot of things behind people's backs. Do you see the swords going into that woman's back? He does a lot of things behind people's backs to backstab them. So you wouldn't see it coming. That's the thing that I'm picking up in Marilyn. You wouldn't, Marilyn Manson, you wouldn't see it coming, but you would feel the effects of it. Because like, let's say you leave someone and you think, okay, you're good, you're whatever, but he stabs you in the back. I'm also being drawn that if you are particularly, but there's, he doesn't stab everyone in the back. It's, it's a particular type of energy that he would do that backstabbing to. And when I'm being picked up, oh my God, I'm pick, picking up so much with just these two cards here, guys. When I'm being picked up with these cards is that once he starts, there's a certain type of woman or a certain type of person because he does this to men and women. There's a particular type of person where if he gets triggered, he can't help himself and he can't stop going after them. He becomes obsessive, obsessive compulsive disorder. Yeah, that's the one that I was trying to get in the other reading. It's like he has an obsessive compulsive disorder. Something would trigger him and it's as if he can't stop. So he has two sides of him. One side where, which is very emotionally intelligent, which has it together. But then there's another side which is coming out with this Knight of Cups. This is his emotionally obsessive his obsessive compulsive side and he doesn't he always does it especially with to people behind their backs it's almost as if it's like witness intimidation sort of thing that's the best phrase i could find towards it these women or these people don't ever see it coming he strikes when they least expect it for maximum impact oh lord okay yeah oh I was just drawn to look below the card. So we have an Eight of Cups. If you know, look at this card really carefully. Whenever I bring up this Eight of Cups, this is always someone's childhood. This is always somewhat someone is running away from. So there is a lot I'm seeing here in terms of his upbringing. And with the teddy, I'm being shown to childhood. And there is something to do with his first romantic situation that scarred him. That's what's coming through for me really strongly. It's like any, and I thank you, Spirit God. It's like there was this first romantic situation that comes through. There's something about his first romantic situation and there's something that happened to him when he was a young boy. For some reason, I'm picking up the ages five, six, seven bracket. There's something that happened to him when he was a young boy. And then there is something about his first ever relationship 
if anyone knows please or if i'm on the right track let me know and pop it down below these things were scarring for him and again we have that cups energy and what's really interesting with him is that in his astrological chart marilyn has no water nearby basically so this is something that really affected him emotionally that's really interesting but what this shows is that it's in him but he tries to run away from it all at the same time which is really interesting like sometimes he basks in it with this knight of cups energy and then he tries to run away from it so there's a bit of a contradiction which is why i picked up at the beginning that this thing that he does he doesn't do it with every woman which is why the dita von tastes and this is why oh my gosh this other woman she's in my thumbnail the other wild child she was uncharmed the actress is on, who was on charm. That's why they could say this didn't happen to them, but other women could say it did. Because there's a particular quality when it comes to a particular type of woman he dates. If he sees that they exhibit a particular quality, it switches. It makes him switch. Oh my God, right. Let's see what else comes through when it comes to him. Interesting, I'm picking up more on Marilyn Manson than I did the T.I. and Tiny. It's really interesting. Um... Ah, there we go, there we go, there we go. That's what I'm saying, the devil card has come through with him. So with this devil card, this could be a lot of your past that's still holding you down, that's still affecting you, number one. Number two, this devil card also talks about substance abuse, as we could see, and that substance abuse keeps him locked and tied to the past as well. I'm being told with this Four of Cups card, however, that a number of either people around him or he himself has tried to lift him out of this situation. He has a lot of Cups energy. There's a lot of emotion. I'm being told trapped emotion with him. And I'm being told rage as well. And now it's being exposed. What else could we have about him growing up? I should have, you know, I should have, oh, there we go. I was just saying I should have um, kept this card out and it popped up. Okay, there we go. Okay, what else could we say about Marilyn Manson and him growing up? This drugs that he takes, there is something about him growing up and a lot of pain that he tries to subdue pain from his past that he, he's running away from it and he uses a lot of drugs to try to subdue it he has tried in the past to get help in handling it as well because you see a lot of fairies around him trying to lift him up and lift him away from um, the cups he has tried to get emotional support and help in the past he has tried so he is aware of these issues he is aware of it. However, once he gets triggered, he gets triggered and he can't help himself. This is what I was saying about the lovers. Remember I said about his first relationship? We see it up here. His first relationship. There is something about his first relationship. Notice what it, I, this reading, what we're doing here is about Marilyn growing up. So I'm just reminding you guys of that because we have the lovers here. There was something about him growing up, his first relationship. This was someone that he was completely taken with, completely taken. Look, look at all the cherubs around him, all the cherubs floating around. He was completely taken with this person. It's a particular type of woman who, it's a, either a characteristic, yeah, look, completely taken with her. It's, it was a past relationship he had at a very young age because when we say childhood, it doesn't necessarily mean just um, being like a child, but I'm talking about teenage years. Like, it's like five, it's like six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight in that period or around that period. And I'm jumping to teenage years as well. There are certain points growing up that have scarred him very, very deeply. Gosh, oh my god, why do these cards drop on the floor? Sorry guys, I just need to get this card. Uh, spirit guides love to throw my cards on the floor. Ah, uh, okay. 
Okay, so this came up and it came up like this. So I will take it like that. So it came up reverse. So the Wheel of Fortune. So with the Wheel of Fortune, it could be good and it could be bad. And in this case, it is bad. And this is what I was saying. Something in terms of this relationship that he had with this person, with this woman. So it could either be his first love. I'm being told for some reason it could be a mother, but um, we have the lover's card here. So it's either someone loving their mother a lot or someone in their first relationship. But something happened which was completely out of the blue, which was very hard to handle. This person, this female person, and female is, and a female figure is divine feminine figure. And it causes a stir in your emotions. So that is why from the first reading, we saw a lot of cups energy coming through with him. Because when he taps into his divine feminine energy and when he taps into his emotional side, this is where all hell breaks loose when it comes to him. Um, but this woman, the reason why I raised this card is that this woman represents stability for him. It represents stability. He was being vulnerable, but something happened in that situation and he's been masking it with drugs he's been with the devil card he's been masking it with drugs he's been masking it with toxic behavior that's what the devil card represents what else could we say about his youth and growing up what else do you want us to know about his youth and about growing up what about very young age did he have financial issues as well? Or things were held back from him? Like, yeah, like he was a... Okay, thank you. This represents money and things being held back. And that's true and that's fine. But it's almost as if he was being teased or baited or they dangled something in front of him with the promise that he could have it and then take it away last minute. There was also that going on in his childhood. What else is there? Okay, guys, what I'm being told with these last set of cards here is I'm being given the word conditioning. Notice this woman with the nine of wands, but notice, notice her arms, notice her legs, look at the bruises, but she's still celebrating. Conditioning, being conditioned to receive pain. Thank you. Okay, what I'm being told is that something about someone being conditioned to receive pain and reveling in pain, right? And that pain represents, it's the way someone expresses love, being reveled in pain. That's his thing. Wow. Wow. Okay. That's the best way I could put it. In terms of the way he grew up, he has a conditioning in him that inflicting pain is there's an enjoy an, an enjoyment and an appeal from that. From speaking to someone in a way that could potentially cause pain and hurt and treating someone in that particular way as well notice the bruises that she has on her but she's still meant to be happy apparently and we have the sun around that there is someone who revels in that we have the page of cups look at my ti reading and it's i think it isn't the ti reading is either the ti or the car lens a lot of men who have this sexual depravity and who exhibit this sexual depravity Every single one of them always get this card. They always get the Page of Cups card, i.e. they come out as very charming initially to start off with. They come out as charming. They say everything that, um, they come out as charming. They appear emotionally intelligent. They appear as, you know, everything that you expect a guy to say, they say it. But for a grown-ass man, 
But these pages are very young boys. They're almost like children. They're teenage children, really. So for a grown ass man to be acting still like a child, it means that emotionally they are stunted. So what this, because we are looking at Marilyn Manson's past energy and the energy of his childhood, because remember we got this childhood card that came through, what this is saying is that he has some emotional, he's very intelligent guy, very intelligent guy, but he is emotionally stunted somewhere in his past as shown by the eight of cups over here another thing is because he's emotionally stunted but very intelligent so he's both intelligent and emotionally stunted when he gets triggered and when he looks to get his own back he always stabs people in the back it's like he doesn't and intimidates them or sends his goons after people it's as if he uh, or sends someone a signal or sends them a message it's as if he doesn't have the emotional wherewithal or the emotional maturity to speak to someone face to face and to handle it oh yeah to speak to someone face to face or to confront someone face to face he always does it in subtle covert ways that's the thing with them so you so therefore it's that being operating in a subtle co co covert way is also a way of keeping control over someone because Women never see it, women and men, because he does it to men as well, never see it coming. But the reason why he acts like that is because, as you can see from the Four of Pentacles, in his teenage years, and I believe in his younger years as well, he was also treated like that. Where someone would dangle, he had a coward over him who manipulated him by always dangling things in front of him, but always keeping it out of reach. So that's where he learned to operate in that way as well. Is there anything else we need to know about Marilyn growing up? I don't think there is. I think we've covered everything the best that I can to explain why he is the way he is now. Yeah, that's what I said with the Ace of Swords. Yep, with the Ace of Swords and the Page of Swords. That's what I said. He is a very, very intelligent person and he worked at being this intelligent, believe it or not. It's the way that he sees the world because look at his hand on the globe. He has his finger on the pulse of what the collective wants. And he, he is very, he is able to intellectually tune into that. He's able to intellectually reinvent himself. However, with the Page of Swords, what comes through here is that he particularly worked towards being intelligent because he felt through being intelligent and he also worked on his authority to get his own back at other people so when he was younger he crafted this image and everything else particularly to mask everything that happened to him and to gain that control okay Woman to him, he goes for he, I'm, I'm being told he goes from woman to woman to woman. There is some connection he has with women. He feels that a woman could heal him, right? So he feels, so he goes from woman to woman, hoping that they could heal him, hoping that they could heal this past that he's been through. And if a woman doesn't heal him, or if he is, or if he, if a woman, he, oh, Gosh, sorry, sorry guys, there's just so many messages, I can't get them out. He looks to women to heal him, right? I said that. But there is something like it's insatiable. Like he relishes off of, I'm being shown like a vampire draining someone of their essence and of their feminine energy. He gets off on draining people. And if someone shows that they are susceptible to that, if a woman shows that they're susceptible to it, if a woman shows that she is taken in by that, and if a woman ch chases him and tries to win his approval and tries to do a lot of these things, and if he could see that he could get away with getting more, he takes advantage to get more. 
That's the best way I can find to phrase it. It's a particular, because that's what I kept on saying. He wouldn't do it to all women. It's a particular type of woman he looks to do it with. It's a particular type of woman who reminds him of his past and a past first love relationship. And it's a particular type of woman as well. There we go. That's the one. That's what I'm saying, guys. It's a particular type of woman he does this to. And there he is, where he is the authority figure. So if you are a king of wands, and if you are speaking to someone like this, you are taking advantage of your position of authority. But he can't do this with all women. Uh -uh, not all women. It's a particular type of woman he could do it to. But this is him, clear as day here. And what I'm being told is that as a child, he went through the same thing also. So this is the reason why the Dita von Tessas could say, oh, this didn't happen to me. I don't recognize this person, etc., etc." That is why she can say something like that, because it's only a particular type of, and that's why she could say that, but Evan Rachel Wood can't say that, because there's a particular type of woman that triggers him. And if he can intimidate someone, he would as well. He's also very crafty in that he uses women to make his money and to raise his appeal as well. So if there's a woman that he could take advantage, like if there are women that he can use, yeah, there we go. That's what I'm saying. The cards don't lie, guys. If there's a particular type of woman, the type of woman that he likes, that he would tend to respect, is if there's a particular type of woman he feels could raise his appeal, raise his standing that he could work with to make money or if the woman is independent themselves and makes money that's the type of woman who he gravitates towards yeah and not only sorry i can't leave it at that that's incomplete that's the type of woman who he would gravitate towards and that's the type of woman he would tend to treat better depending on what better means, because it's such a subjective word when it comes to him and his depravity. And he would treat that type of woman better than he would treat... Um, yeah, there we go. He would treat them better. The magician card, he treats them better than he would treat... Um, there's a particular type that he knows that he could take advantage of. And when he takes it, and when he knows that he could take advantage of them, he would not stop. There we go. When he knows he could take advantage of them, he wouldn't stop. That's where he begins to get triggered. But people knew about his penchant to do this. It is known that he has a habit of doing this. But there's a particular type of woman who he knows he could use, who um, he would treat really well. There's a particular type of woman he treats well. But there's also a particular type that he would cause hell to throw them out the tower, etc. There's someone who is sick. Okay. I didn't expect to get all of this out of this reading. I really didn't expect to get. Uh, I feel as if for this reading I've been all over the place. So if you guys could follow the jumping ball. Good. At least you guys would be better than me. Okay, so I'm just going to take a break to just pull some oracle cards on him. This is what I'm being told rigid. Rigidity and deceit is in his energy. What you, what comes across with him is not what's it. And there's a lot with this situation, especially with these women that is hidden. For him, deceit runs rampant. And intimidation as well. Okay. So that's his childhood. I don't know what this is. This is just a rampant... A... So with the moon card here, notice this reduces to a five. There is going to be a lot that's going to come out of him um, with regards to him. We've just hit the tip of the iceberg when it comes to him. We've just hit the tip. And I'm being drawn to this crow. And five means challenges, right? So this reduces to five. So there's a lot coming in for him. 
and look at this crow or this raven in this image right so when the bird starts circling it's not really good there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be coming out and throwing him under the bus as well with this deceit card so this does not look good for him i'm not sure the spirit guides just led me i don't usually do oracle cards in this reading but spirit guides have just led me to this so let's look at judi judication so what do i want to use for judication this is going to go to court as i picked up in the very beginning there is something so we've done his childhood we've done that so i'll put that to one side We've done thoughts and his obsessive thoughts. Oh, under obsessive thoughts. Oh, oh my God, guys, look. So you remember I talked about his obsessive thoughts, family room, him growing up and courtship. There we go. And remember, we discussed the way he treats women. And we have courthouse that have come up with him as well. That's what I'm saying. He is going to court. The guy is going to court. That's the thing. It's... um. This is definitely heading for court. There is something about this situation that's darker than we currently know right now. This situation is going to court. He has two court cards. And this two and three, it reduces to a five. So remember, we got five for the other oracle cards as well. He has a lot of challenges. This shows a lot of challenges when it comes to him going to court. He's going to try with judication to settle with a lot of people he's going to try to settle with them but yeah this is yep yeah, we have the devil card the devil with him has come up again the devil has come up again the ten of swords has come up again and the nine of hazards and i've shuffled i've shuffled this guys i've shuffled Oh, with the world. Guys, we are going to see this go down. I'm being told that there's a statute of limitations on here as well. There's something about statute of limitations also I'm being told of. He is going to fall because we got this in terms of his behavior to other people. And that's confirmed here again with the devil next to the way he has treated other people. However, this is the time for other with this be becoming so public. The world is able to see this is setting his world on fire. As you can see by the globe on fire. He is going to try to explain this away, but there is more that is going to come out in fact this with the nine of hazards look at this scene really carefully look at this grocery scene what we are experiencing now believe it or not is the calm before the storm there is more news that's going to come out that's going to let light his world on fire he's not going to be able to explain it away this is someone who is seriously depraved and this is someone he tried to seek help Remember when I showed the Four of Cups um, in the other deck? He did try to seek help. He did try to change. He knows that this is depravity. He, he did try to change at one point. He's going to try to explain this away, but he's not going to be able to explain this away. We have two court cards that are here. He's going to try to settle, but this is going to go to court. I'm being told again with this intimidation, like there are people with this devil card and with this ten of swords, he tried to intimidate people to shut up, either threaten them or reveal secrets about them. But with this nine, he only got so far. He wasn't being he wasn't able to be fully successful. But with the ten and the world on the board, he did threaten to reveal secrets about people to the world. Yep, and secrets to, re to reveal about particularly people who were lovers or long-term lovers of his with the Two of Cups. With the Ten of Cups, sorry. Ten of Cups, with, particularly with people that he loved. Is he in a relationship at the moment with the Ten of Cups? Because there is some 
because this could also show that with the Ten of Cups, because Ten of Cups talks about family and fulfillment, and it, and it talks about family as well. So it could be that he has been, he has changed in a way, in that he's looked to settle down with someone. I don't know whether he has someone in his life at the moment who really has his back when it comes to this. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. Look, three of cups. Notice holding the bride. Is this, Does he have someone at the moment that he is happy with, that he's settled down with, who has his back here? Because we have the three of cups. He is married. It's like either he's secretly married or he has a long-term partner who may come out and say that he's changed. You know, women love to do that. He's changed. He's not like that with me. It's his persona. Yep. Four of Wands and the Emperor. What does this mean? He's going to say that he's... I, I got it now. Thank you. He's going to say that he's changed. Notice him standing in front of the door and everything in his past wanting to come to light. He's going to say that he's changed or he's going to blame it on his career. But a lot of stories are going to come out. He's going to say that it's either his career or something like that. But this woman loves him, whoever she is. She loves him. This woman. Ah, oh, she'd do anything for him, it looks like her. I'm going to be wrapping this reading up, I think. But he is going to the courthouse. Yep. Yeah. Yep, he is going to, again, it's interesting. With T.I. and Tiny, I got the sun card towards the end as well. For Marilyn, I got the sun card towards the end also. And at the end of Tiny's reading, I got the Wheel of Fortune as well. At the end of their reading, I got the real, at the end of Marilyn's reading, I get the real Wheel of Fortune this talks about the court of public opinion as well, which is the one that they really care about. They really care about the court of public opinion. 